What is up my peepholes? This is your guy Cly, and welcome back to Budget Buys Budget Tripping Edition. Now today I want to take a look at yet another item that I found at my local five below and surprisingly enough I do think this is something that could prove useful for different types of content creators. The item in question is this little guy. This is the sound cam selfie stick from you you say and I know what some of you are thinking. Why would I think a selfie stick would be useful for people doing something other than taking pics for Instagram? And well, funnily enough, I'm using one right now. That's right, my overhead rig is pretty much just a selfie stick zip tied to another stand I had lying around. It's cheap, it's effective, and it really rings true to the theme of this channel. And aside from that use, I think that this selfie stick in particular would prove to be useful for vloggers or pretty much anyone doing on-the-go video capture, especially if their primary camera is just going to be their cell phone. So let me get this box out of the shot and show you exactly what we're working with. All right, here's the selfie stick in question, and to be perfectly honest, I've got quite the list of pros and cons after doing a bit of hands-on testing. And I think I'm going to start things off nicely and go with a pro. I adore this phone mount. Not only is it well designed in that it folds back entirely along the shaft of the selfie stick, but if I go ahead and open it up, I can tell you that it does its job quite well. Across the top metal bracket here, you have a nice rubberized coating, unlike some of the $1 mounts that you can find, which really only have a bit of rubber right there. Also, the tab that you pull in order to extend the metal bracket feels like it's not going to go anywhere. I've actually had a few of these little pieces snap off. Also, whereas this has just kind of meh foam, this is the same rubberized material that you're going to be getting at the top. Not only that, but both the top and bottom curve in just a little bit to do a better job of gripping your phone. Now for a con when it comes to this design, and that is the fact that you're stuck with the phone bracket. This goes on a selfie stick that has a quarter inch bolt, basically the selfie stick that I'm using right now. This, you're going to use a phone. If you're not going to use a phone, you're going to use something that is the size and shape of a phone. That's all I can really say. Now the next pro of the design would have to be the shaft. Not only does this extend to about 39 inches, I want to say, which is about twice what some of the Dollar Tree selfie sticks I've used extend to, but it also has this indentation going along the shaft. And I know some of you are wondering, why the heck do you want that? And the answer is simple. It's going to keep the shaft from rotating while you're taking a pic. Now, of course, you could probably apply enough torque to deform this indentation, but if you do that, you're basically going to be ripping off the phone mount before anything happens to this bit of metal. Also, we have a shutter button built into the shaft right there, which is quite nice. And finally, we have the aforementioned sound cam, which is basically a microphone built into the handle of the selfie stick. And while it does say that this is the first ever sound cam, it's not the first selfie stick that I've encountered with a built-in microphone. However, this is actually the first one I've seen with a built-in discrete microphone. Meaning you're not going to look like you've got a microphone built into your selfie stick. That way you don't look even more out of place by using a selfie stick. Because admittedly, you're going to stand out using a selfie stick. The other ones that I've seen, A, go for about twice as much as this little guy, if not four times as much. I've seen them 10, 20, maybe even more. Actually, yeah, I've seen one up to $40 and they look like microphones. You're either going to have one that is a spangled karaoke mic or one that's made to look like a newscaster's microphone and in my opinion, those are both super tacky. This, you've got a nice little mic right there that points towards the person operating the camera, which is great if you're doing overhead shots and you don't want to use a lav mic because I do have a lavalier made for cell phones. This is an Audio-Technica ATR3350i, and it's got about 20 feet of cable. You don't need 20 feet of cable. Of course, I also have this little guy which has about 6 feet of cable, but if you're using the selfie stick with a full extension and you have arms as long as mine, 
it might not reach if you're doing an overhead shot. Now, the downside to both the shutter button and the selfie stick is, I don't know if it's my selfie stick in particular or if it's just the overall design of this product, but there seems to be a bit of interference between these two and it affects each phone system differently. I've tested this both on an iPhone and an Android device. <sighs> That's, it, it's not great, people. If I'm using this on Android, what you're going to have is a little bit of electrical interference, a little beep kind of noise, and it's not pleasant to listen to in the silent parts, and you can still hear it over the talking. However, if you're using this with an iOS device, it's not going to detect the microphone at all. Instead, it will detect the selfie button. Both versions detect the selfie button just fine. It does its job. But if you make a loud noise in the microphone trying to get it to pick you up, the iPhone thinks you clicked the selfie button. So it's going to stop your recording. Not exactly a good thing. All of that being said, I actually did find a workaround. I was able to get this microphone to work perfectly fine with the recording, though it did mean I was basically cutting the selfie button out of the circuit. And I didn't actually have to modify anything in the selfie stick itself. Instead, what I ended up doing was using a couple of adapters. First was a splitter adapter for the cable here, because as you can see, it has a TRRS connector, also known as a four pole or multi-jack connector. And I just used the little TRRS to dual TRS adapter that came with my UUSA gaming headset, which I reviewed earlier. I took this little guy, plugged the microphone portion into this little guy. This is basically the opposite of this one. It takes dual TRS connectors and turns them into TRRS connectors that plug straight into your cell phone. This came with the Audio-Technica mic that I showed you earlier, but you don't necessarily need to buy one of those to get one of these. If you were to buy these connectors separately, the one with the gaming headset will cost you about $5 on Amazon, which if you need one immediately and are willing to pay $5, just get the headset from you, you say at five below, you get a nice set of headphones along with your adapter. Otherwise, if you're willing to wait a bit, I did find these on AliExpress in the 60 to 80 cents range, so it's not that bad. As for this one, you're looking at the same price point as this if you're buying it on Amazon and on AliExpress. So $5 on Amazon, 60 cents on AliExpress. Even better, you can actually get a matching pair so that you have one that looks like this going in one direction and the other direction. So I've done enough rambling on getting everything to work. What I'll do right now is hop over to my Android phone because I can't really show you the non-functional mic on an iOS device and let you hear a clean sample and one with the interference. All right, I've got the sound cam attached and to give myself the best case audio scenario, I've got the selfie stick angled at about 45 degrees away from the base of my camera. That way, no matter which direction I point it, it's going to pick up my voice. So let's go ahead and swap over to the adapter, shall we? So as you heard, the ticking really didn't kick in until the last second on the previous clip and that just goes to show you how unpredictable the interference really is. That's why I have to use these adapters to give me a bit of a competitive edge. So let's hop back over to the table so that I can wrap things up. And there you have it. Now I'm not going to be running this little guy through an audio spectrum analyzer like I've been doing with all of the other mics in this series. And that's mainly due to the fact that the thing that I use to hook this into my computer adds a bit of device noise that you don't get in the final video files. And that's just not a fair comparison. However, that doesn't mean I'm not going to say anything when it comes to the sound quality. I feel this delivers a whole heck of a lot better sound than my phone's built-in camera, especially doing an overhead shot because I can talk straight into the handle and there's no issue there. It also doesn't have as much bulk as if I were using a lavalier with a freaking 20-foot cable. Heck, it's got a much better bass response than a lot of the labs out there, and that includes the ATR3350i that I showed you earlier. 
And I feel that it has to do with the fact that based on everything I'm seeing here, it's using a 10 millimeter Electret capsule in the handle, which will deliver decent audio. All of that being said, I can't really say that this is a great grab as presented. Yes, it might have been a failure on quality controls part, and I got one of the few bunk mics on the market, but at the same time, it might have been an error at the design stage, and they went with poorly insulated wiring. I don't know what's causing the cross-contamination of signals between the selfie button and the mic, so I can't give a definitive answer on that part. However, if you're willing to take a risk and return if it doesn't work properly, you could do worse at this price. If you're willing to work around it like I did, well, it's actually going to deliver pretty dang decent audio quality without all of the bulk of a super long cable lavalier mic. So I'm so torn. I wanted to give this a great review from the start, especially when I heard that audio quality with the adapters, but I can't. So it's up to you to decide. Buyer beware is all I'm going to say. Until next time, this is your guy, Kali, signing off.